Tonight, I'm showing you my massive nine foot long farmhouse table. This is the cherry farmhouse table that matched the farmhouse benches that I made in my last video. I made this table and bench set for a friend who really wanted to have a large gathering place in the heart of her home. For the main support posts, I started with some massive cherry boards, cut them to length on my miter saw, and ripped them to width on the table saw. These were then glued up to make 5 inch square posts that would end up supporting the entire weight of the tabletop. I then squared up those edges on the joiner and table saw until I had a nice square post. Next, using my tenon jig, I cut the big tenons into either end of the posts. These were all smoothed out and sized by hand with a chisel. The trestle base was six inches wide and needed a lot of weight in order to keep the whole table grounded. This was made by gluing up three boards to make a really solid foundation. One of the classic farmhouse table base designs has rounded over feet. And since I didn't have a six inch round over router bit, I cut it out on the bandsaw first and then smoothed out the saw marks with a variety of files. The final smoothing was done with some light passes of my sander. I cut the mortises in the table base with my recently acquired hollow chisel mortiser in a series of passes. These were then cleaned up again with a chisel. The 45 degree supports are designed to lock in the top and bottom of the trestles so there's no loosening of the joints over time. These required a lot more glue ups and after trimming and squaring, I cut the angles on either end. The tenons on these legs needed a 45 degree shoulder, so I used the same jig that I created for the farmhouse benches to create these. The rest of the tenons were cut out on the bandsaw and by hand with a dovetail saw. All of these sides were cut slightly larger and then shaved down with a chisel. The two trestles are held together with two dovetailed boards along the top. So before gluing up the top of the trestle, I had to cut out the dovetails on either end of the boards. After the dovetail slot was cut into this top, I carefully glued up the two boards and squared up the sides. Following the farmhouse table design, the top has a simple chamfer across either end. All of these mortises for the 45 degree supports required one side of the mortise to have a 45 degree side so that all had to be done by hand. I glued the feet onto the trestle base. These feet were slightly wider than the base itself. I then went back with a hand plane and planed them down flush with the edge. Everything fits and holds together in this design without glue, so a dry assembly is easy and very satisfying after cutting so many mortises. The top supports which connect the trestles were cut and squared up and then had the dovetail measured and cut into each end.
The big stringer in the center was cut down to size and squared up. But because of the large size of the board and the small size of my shop, I had to rotate the table saw in order to cut the tenons on the ends. These tenons are also extra deep, so they have a lot of gluing surface area inside each post. The tabletop was made from six nine foot long boards that I oriented so the grain would be alternating up and down. This helps keep the table from cupping or twisting over time. These boards were cut and jointed along the edges before gluing them up with biscuits. I did this glue up in two parts so I didn't have too much wet glue to deal with at once. When you're gluing along the grain, the primary purpose of the biscuits is to help in aligning the long edges during clamping. They don't really add much structural strength because the glue is already plenty strong. After that, I had to scrape off the glue and smooth out the entire top. This took a combination of hand plane, bell sander, random orbital sander, and just plain sandpaper to give it a smooth but still farmhouse look. In this style, the piece should already show some wear so you don't have to feel bad about digging a corner or scratching the top. I knocked down the edges on this too with a chisel to give it a more worn look. I cut a few extra mortises along the top edge for attaching the tabletop to the base. I also made some blocks with a lip along the bottom edge, which will be attached to the tabletop. I'll show you more on this a little bit later. All of the pieces were stained individually with a gel stain before assembly, which makes removing glue squeeze out much easier. The trestles were then assembled individually. The nice thing about this base design is that the joints hold together fairly well even without glue so minimal clamping was required. The two trestles were then glued together with the dovetails on top and the stringer down the center. I put the final finish on the top separately from the base so I could finish the underside evenly as well. This finish was Osmo Pollux Oil, which works well for tabletops since it's a hard wax finish that resists water. Finally, I attached the tabletop to the base using the sliding blocks with loose mortises on either end to allow for tabletop expansion and a tighter one in the middle to make sure the top stays centered on the base. For a table this size, it's very important to allow for that expansion and contraction. The final problem was getting the nine foot farmhouse table over to my friend's house. With some help and a trailer, we got it over there installed and ready for use. and my friend was very happy with the result. So we searched for months and months trying to find a table. The main piece that we really needed was that the pedestal part of it, the, the stability of the table, would allow for everyone to sit all the way around it and for the benches to be able to push, be pushed underneath it. And the whole design of this table, the way that Jared put it together, is perfect. It allows for us to just have our family of six at it on a daily basis, but I could probably, with the benches and chairs, I imagine I could probably fit about 14 people at this table. It's exactly what we all envisioned, and it's so fun to get to see it in its space, where it will stay forever. 
I love it. Couldn't be happier. This table was really fun to build, but it took a long time, and I'm really glad that I will be able to get some space back in my shop. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see all of the latest projects and whatever it is I'm working on. See you next time.